Uh, but I want to ask you about this. So this meeting that uh, that the president had with his group of sheriffs yesterday. Yeah. Uh, first of all, he did talk about uh, the murder rate. Uh, if we uh, could hear, hear talking to the sheriffs. The murder rate in our country is the highest it's been in 47 years, right? Did you know that? 47 years. I used to use that. I'd say that in a speech and everybody was surprised because the press doesn't tell it like it is. It wasn't to their advantage to say that. Isn't that funny how everybody was surprised? Did you know that? It's funny Weren't how surprising surpri lies are, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. really, people get really boggled when you tell them things that aren't true. It's, it's very confusing for everybody. Right. Where, in fact, as CNN reported yesterday, according to the FBI, they're the ones that keep the statistics, right. the population has gone up 100 million in the last 47 years, and the murder rate is one half of what it was 47 right. years ago. Right, right. And a lot of times politicians use uh, <laughs> specious claims about the murder rate as a sort of stalking horse yeah. for violent crime more broadly. But yeah. even if you look yeah. at violent crime statistics, uh, we're in much better shape nationally and in almost all major cities than we were even 15, 20 years ago. It's been uh, it, there was a, a period in the in the 80s and 90s where violent crime right. really had spiked up to uh, a st historically high, alarmingly high level, and that helped drive a lot of bad policy in the 90s in this town. Um, but yeah, we're, we've 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 walked back from that. We've arrived at a place where public safety interests are are being much better served, and the statistics bear that out. But if you're willing to lie about the statistics, you can shape the world any way you want to. I guess. Yeah, in fact, on violent crime, I was just looking here. The FBI reports. Uh, back in 1991, as you say, there's mm -hmm. a lot of bad policy, like the three strikes and you're out right. bill and, right. and, and some of these prison, excessive prison right. terms, all a result of that. At that time, the rate of violent crime was 758 per 100,000 residents. Mm -hmm. Today, it is 373 yeah, we've got it per 100,000. So that's still too many, but it's cut in half. Right. Right, and that's the thing. That's the thing about crime statistics, and it's it's people's sense of the crime around them is always heightened, is always mm. sort of hypersensitive, uh, and and it, there's no such thing as a good enough crime rate for anybody. Yeah, um, right. And so you can always you can always play that game. It's just so jarring today, I think, because for the past eight or ten years, uh, not coincidentally overlapping with Barack Obama's presidency. There had emerged a political consensus that the old retail politics of frightening people with crime statistics and um, promising to keep them safe in ways that are sort of childish and disingenuous, uh, that that wasn't a, a good way to do business anymore in American politics. And, and even some of the staunchest conservatives in both Republican and Democratic parties uh, who had played that game for a long time had, had basically given it up, had sort of set those, set those political weapons aside and started to talk in more rational honest terms about crime. The, th the thing about the, the throwing these numbers out like that, right, is he just does it and nobody rebuts him because he's just there just sort of tossing it out. And I give Jake Tapper credit. Yesterday we had Kellyanne Conway on. He, he really pushed back at her about it. But again, it's like throwing a snowball into hell. I mean, it's right. already out there, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah. it's out there. And so his base has already picked it up. And they don't care if Jake, I mean, as far as they're concerned, Jake Tapper is lying, not their, right. not their president. Right. Yeah, so he's I, got this direct line to his people. He's, yeah. Everybody's sort of filter bubbled out of uh, being able to agree on any sort of mutual facts. Makes debate very hard. Yeah. It's well, a, is it surprising to you that nobody in that room of sheriffs would say, well, <laughs> that Mr. President is not really correct? I, I wish it was surprising. I, I tend to think that uh, people who serve in sort of executive offices in law enforcement agencies, whether it's local sheriffs or local police departments or federal investigative positions, uh, if, if your interest as a law enforcement professional is in leadership, uh, then you, you have to sort of uh, press the flesh a little bit. You have to be a little bit of a politician. There's no real upside to you as the sheriff of, say, Hennepin County uh, to, to look the president in the face and say, uh, sir, that's not true. Especially yeah, when there are yeah. cameras in the room, uh, right. there's no, there's no, there's no benefit to you and to your officers and to your community from defying the president uh, or or embarrassing the president, even when the president is so ruthlessly uh, vigorous about about embarrassing himself. Well, let me ask you this then: Is there anyone around Donald Trump, uh, a Reince Priebus or a Kellyanne Conway or somebody who's going to pull him aside and say, you know, Mr. President? Um, that number may sound like really impressive, but it's not true and you shouldn't use it anymore? No, there absolutely isn't. And, and I think part of the reason why is there are a lot of people in the mainline Republican Party and especially in Trump's own political movement, a lot of voters um, who are deeply convinced 
that there has been for decades a campaign by major media to cover up black violence against white people. There's a, a really revanchist, uh, vengeful impulse within Trump's movement toward the black community that is entirely premised on the idea that there are thousands and thousands of violent crimes being perpetrated by black people against white people every day and the media aren't covering them because it somehow doesn't serve the interests of the media's masters. I, I mentioned earlier, right. uh, during the campaign, Trump tweeted out that horribly wrong statistic about 92 percent of all crime in America, violent right. crime, is black people committed on white people. Right. And it's like it's purely meant to just scare the hell out of white people. Right. Right. And and it, that taps into uh, Trump. Trump is, was more successful at tapping into that sort of panicked sense of victimhood in yeah. that's that's at large in white America uh, than than his predecessors in the Republican Party. But that's not for lack of trying from people like Ryan Priebus. Right. Priebus yeah. oversaw a party that was um, playing that same tune, just a little quieter. Uh, a little with a little more um, vibrato to it uh, than than Trump is capable of or interested in, and it's right. that same Trump's willingness to just flagrantly misrepresent uh, the reality of the world in ways that play to people's sense of what the world is like um, is what allowed him to break through in the primary.